would you uh, what did you make of the game the other day and the offensive performance and I mean, what was the running? What was the big thing with the running game? What, what got it going? Mm, I just think our um, our kids play with an extreme amount of effort in the game. It was, you know, we had more production. That's what everybody talks about. Um, we probably looked like the offense that we've always run. That's what everybody talks about. But when you watch the film, what happened was we played with a lot more effort, enthusiasm, and intensity than we had all year. And I think that is the reason that we end up, um, you know, having production. Does it, let me ask Bobby yesterday, how big of a difference is it having quarterback under center as far as in, a, in the running game? Um, you know, some teams say, I mean, there's teams that are really running the ball well that never get under the center. Um, I think for us, um, like I said the other night, it's not that we were under the center that, um, you know, allowed us to run the ball better. I just think our kids, um, you know, were a lot more intense. Um, they played with just an extreme amount of effort. We didn't do everything right, but I think that um, just the level of um, intensity um, you know, gave us a chance to really move the ball. How do you? How did you think Kyle played? What did you? What did you think he did right? And, and mm. some things he needs to work on. Well, Kyle did a good job. Kyle has really grown, um, you know, since the Clemson game. Um, he really um, was down on himself after that game early in the season. Um, I didn't really have to get on him much um, because he watched the film. He's really hard on himself. And he was under control. He looked mature in the game the other day. He made a lot of pressure checks. That's one thing that allowed us to hit some huge runs is that he advantage checked. He saw a certain defense and then checked us to a certain run, and we ended up popping the run out of there. But, um, you know, he was under control. He really saw the defense well. There was one mistake in the passing game that he made early in the game. But besides that, he was very efficient. And, um, you know, I thought he handled himself really well out there. So it's nice to have three quarterbacks because at some point, like Bobby said earlier, you're going to need them, and you have. Yeah, I want more. <laughs> uh, I think they all know that. I, I want more in my meeting room. What, what offensive line-wise, the difference? And then talk about Aaron, you know, being that captain, being the senior, going back in. Not, it, it'd been kind of a rough month or so for him not being able to play and going back in there the other day and what what he kind of meant to the offense yeah you know the kid though what no one realizes or can see is that what he does you know inside of our building you know the attitude that he brings even when there's two true freshmen playing in front of him that he's still in the meeting room leading the meetings um, he's still teaching those guys you know this is how you do things out there this is what to expect um, so he never, I think what gave him a chance to play well is that his attitude never did, um, you know, back off or he never ended up with a bad attitude or down on himself. He just kept trying to help the other kids that were playing. And then when his opportunity came last week, it really came through for us. Just, I mean, I think that he definitely had a lot to do with us playing with a lot more physical and with a lot more intensity. What did you think after you saw it on film? Um, I mean, obviously, I, you know, there's some mis mistakes that I need to correct. Uh, early part in the game where I made that uh, bad decision and threw a pick. But overall, I just felt like I really handled that <clears throat> mistake well, and I was able to bounce back and forget about it and do my best to put us in good positions to be successful. Is it, a diff is it different being on a Tuesday knowing you're the starter? I mean, you, you've had that, I guess, what, once – once before this year of no one. I mean, is it different um, the way you prepare for this weekend? I wouldn't say it's different. I mean, we on the team, everybody knows who the starting quarterback is going to be uh, the beginning of the week. It's just we kind of keep it under wraps until the game com comes along. So, you know, obviously for Clemson, I knew I was starting. Um, last week I knew I was starting. This week I know I'm starting. So... I guess you could say it may be a little bit different because you know that you're the guy that's going to be playing, but on a preparation standpoint, point, you know, you you don't know when you're going to get on the field. So I try to take every week and prepare the same way as if I was starting starting the ball game. What is it about you that you just seem to? Uh, Coach McGee was talking about you made some checks in the right running play, and you seem to have the ability to recognize what's out there and make the right call. Um, you know, early in the year at Clemson, 
uh, I knew all the checks. It's just I wasn't as confident in making the decision based on what I was seeing on the field. And after watching that game, you know, I understood. Like, you know, I, I knew I, I saw that. I knew that, uh, that this blitz was coming. So I just kind of, you know, just threw out all the pressure and the weight that was on the shoulders and just went with my gut and what I knew because I believe that I prepared very, prepared very well prior to the game this past week. So I knew what to expect and what plays would be advantage checks to the defenses they ran. You, you've talked before and the coaches have talked about how they put so much pressure on you guys during practice. So even more so maybe than you see in a game. So when you get in a game and it gets rolling, does it kind of become fun? Yeah, it's a lot more fun because in practice, they know what they want. So you got to know what they're expecting you to do in, during the play. Excuse me, but um, in the game, you know, they're just happy on positive yardage. So, you know, if you miss a check, but you correct it with a good pass or the O-line makes a great block and they get positive yards, yeah, that's something to learn from, but you're not getting, you know, the, the I guess, the hassle from, from making the wrong decision. How, how different is the line than Clemson? that game from them until now how, how different are they or how much have they improved um I just think on a confidence level I think that you know they've gotten a lot of experience Clemson was was a really 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 great team as you can see they're doing very very well this season so you know having guys that are new on the line or just new to playing you know they weren't playing with a lot of I guess speed because of their confidence level but now that they've all gotten into the game and they've understand you know college football the speed that it is they're able to just react to plays rather than you know thinking the whole time how big is it to send these seniors off with a win it's huge because you know, I've been here for three years so you know these guys are some of my closest friends so I'm just hoping that we can go out there and bring the same enthusiasm and effort that we brought to Syracuse you know and go out with a boom um, they're a very good team, so it's just you know we just got to make sure that we study their techniques and and what they do well, and put together a good p game plan and try to do our best to bring enthusiasm, effort, and just play Louisville football. Kyle, you said uh, I guess it was after Saturday's game that that you kind of feel like you know a little bit of what some of the running backs' preferences are of kind of like how you hand it off to them and how they like to stretch it out and things like that. Is it, what, are, what are some examples of that? Like what's Brandon like or what's LJ like? Or? Um, b rag goes 100% every single play. So if it's like an outside uh, zone run, I know that I've got to get the ball and get out quick or he's going to beat me to the mesh point. Um, you know, Jeremy's a big back. Uh, he does a really good job with his footwork. So... You know, I'm able to recognize where he's going and give him the ball to where he can make a play. And, you know, LJ, LJ's a great running back as well. And he's a very smart running back, so he's able to react to the O-line. And sometimes if I make a mistake on giving him the ball, he's able to correct that with his, his knowledge of the game. Do you get a sense that, um, that, you know, I guess when you line up under center and things like that, that, that maybe the defense – isn't able to key on what you're going to do pre-snap, you know, maybe the way that if you line up in shotgun, you just can kind of, there's more options in the playbook and things like that as far as which way you run and things like that. Yeah, I would say that. I mean, I guess in college, college game nowadays, you know, a lot of people move to the shotgun when they pass and then when they're under center, they normally run the ball. Uh, so just, I try to work very hard on throwing with rhythm and timing and accuracy from under center, whether it be a three-step, five-step or a seven-step drop. Uh, so just giving us that ability to run the ball downhill or take a drop from under center and complete a ball down the field, I think really helps us out. On the second touchdown you threw, Cole, before the snap, were you pretty sure you were going to get clocked pretty good? You said you get rid of it quick? Um, actually, when I looked at the defense, I was like, wow, I can't believe you know these safeties are so wide. This is about to be a, a touchdown to Cole because all they had was a middle linebacker on Cole. Uh, so when I took this, the drop, I realized that right as I looked at Cole, a guy was coming. So, I mean, I didn't even see the touchdown. I just threw it, got hit, and then I heard the crowd go crazy. So I figured they caught it for a touchdown. Cool feeling, huh? Yeah, I love that feeling. That's a better feeling than seeing it happen, actually. Kyle, you, uh, um, you know, you said you've been practicing the same effort level, regardless of whether you're starting or not. But was there a moment you thought maybe you weren't going to get another chance to, to play this year? Um, 
No, I think I grew a lot from my redshirt freshman year. You know, that was when I got down on myself, lost confidence, didn't know like what I was going to do with my future, my career, this and that. Um, but going through all that and learning from it, I was able to handle myself in a more mature way this year. Uh, you know, a guy that really helped me out a lot was a man named John Gordon. And he's written a couple books, and I've talked to him on the phone a lot. And, you know, he just basically has told me that you create your world from the inside out. And basically that means that as long as you're positive within and, you know, you see your, your goals and you follow your goals from inside, no matter what happens on the outside, you know, you're always going to be in a positive light. And I think that really helps me when it, when it comes to coming off the bench cold and stepping in the game and being able to perform well. Because if I sit back and just, you know, stay negative and get down on this and that, then I feel like that that's going to overwhelm me and that's really going to put a lot more pressure on me than what I need. How do you, uh, I'm sorry if you asked me, it's all right, but how do you kind of approach it as far as like your job as a starter's job now? I mean, uh, you know, do you look at it as a, a one week thing or do you think you got, or you, you feel like you're the starter now for the rest of the year, you've earned that? Or how do you, how do you approach that? I mean, like I said, I just look at one game at a time. So I know that on the start of this week, I know what my role is and my role is to put us in a good run, put us in a good pass, throw completions, and try to be a energizer for the team. So whatever I can do this week to get us a W versus Virginia, then I guess the rest will work itself out. All right. Just talk about how difficult the year has been, you know, in there, not in there, and then having to go back in. What, how's your mindset been? And Coach said you've been kind of the rock in the, in the locker room for this team. Oh, yeah, it's just the uh, same thing I tell, I tell, I would tell anybody that was in my position, like being a fifth year senior and you're behind freshman, like it's, it's not about me, it's about the team. So like, if, if coach feels as though those guys can give us a chance to win, then I'm all in for it because I, I want to win just as bad as everybody else does. What was the, what do you feel like was the issue the first few weeks as to, as to why things, you know, why coach wanted to make a change? Oh, uh, honestly, I, I, it was just the fact that just going in there and, and working hard. He, he wanted to go a, a different route at the time, and I was in for it. I, I was all in. If that's what he wants to do, then I'm all in for it. What, what do you think went right last week with the line in, <clears throat> in the running game? Uh, it was just, just studying, honestly, just watching film. I just literally breaking down film and knowing exactly what's going on in for – the opposite side of the line to make the checks and for Kyle to put us in the right play. Like everything worked out for itself. What did you think of, of getting your, you know, another chance, come back and you were going to start again and uh, and, and just kind of knowing uh, that you got to get back in the lineup? Uh, just actually just making the most out of the opportunity. Just going out there having fun. Cause I told him, I was like, I was like, you, like, you, you know it's going to be, it's going to be a little rowdy because I'm in there. <laughs> we're going to have fun now. We're going to have fun. Talk about being a leader of this team, and you've still been the captain every week. Just talk about what that role has meant to you. Oh, it means a lot because I could, I could be a negative person and sit to the side and be mad, but the fact that those guys are still looking up to me, and if something goes wrong, like when Kenny's in there, and something goes wrong, he comes to the sideline. If uh, Coach K like has too much going on, Kenny would come to me and like, how do I do this or what's going on? Like, okay, well, just take your time and just think. Like, don't. Overreact like everything's gonna be all right, and it's just the fact that those guys can still come to me. And with me knowing the game, I don't have a problem with helping them. Can you? What, do you, what have you seen out of Kenny this year as far as talent he has? Uh, he has? He's gonna be a really good player. <laughs> he's gonna him and Jaren. Those, those guys are gonna be really good players. The young guys, and especially all of the young guys, they're gonna be really good because they're all talented. And like like I said, I think I said it back in camp, they're willing to learn. Like they're, they're picking up. The, they're picking up the program very fast. What's Saturday gonna mean for you? You've been through a lot of ups and downs, and having the last game here. Uh, really hasn't hit me yet. I'm trying to not think about it because uh, it's coming up so fast. But yeah, five years have really flown by very fast. It's just I, I'm trying to take it all in at once. Aaron, what the coach was saying, I guess, that uh, maybe you were, were – did you consider quitting football after last year or were you always going to come back and play this year? No, I was always going to come back. I don't want to think about what, what it should have, could have, or what I, what I would have did. No, I was always going to come back. I'm going to play football until I have no more eligibility. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, where are you right now academically? You're, you're, you've, I know you've already got your degree. How, where are you at with your uh, degree? My, with my master's? I'll be done in – well, actually, I walk 
this fall. I'll be done this fall with my master's. So just like another month or two, you'll graduate with that? Yeah. Actually, I, I just got to finish this one paper and I'll be done with school. Yeah. What's a, uh, um, just for the record, what are, I know it's like white collar kind of, kind of stuff, but what, yeah, it's, uh, what criminal, would your degree be in and things like that? It would be uh, criminal justice with a concentration in white collar crimes. That would be my master's. Where'd you get interested in that? I mean, uh, just sitting around and like actually, you gotta have uh, like a. I was I'm into math, but when I found out I can do I can do math and do criminal law at the same time, and it actually puts two and two together, you, it's like it's very interesting. Like, it's just something that just tested me. So you wanna be like an FBI? FBI kind of somewhere thing. in the federal field, somewhere in the federal field. Yeah. So what is the kind of things that you would envision that you would be? You know, um, I mean, like, as far as like when I tax evasion and stuff like that, or yeah, tax evasion, like uh, organized crime, dealing with a lot of like stuff going on on Wall Street that nobody really knows about. None of us really know about actually. So yeah. when did you get interested in all that kind of stuff? I mean, as far as like, uh, actually, it, was, it probably would have been my sophomore year because I uh, actually I was just doing research and just came came about it and just trying to figure out what. A lot of things meant that I was lost to at the time because everybody watches Law and Order and all that stuff. But you try to figure out what else is going on out there that you're not seeing. Yeah. Would, uh, so say you know six, seven years from now, ten years from now, you're like interrogating a guy across the table. Like you think you, you know, being a six eight guy will probably. Uh... Yeah, I think I think uh, first appearance would uh, would would definitely would definitely get him. Yeah. <laughs> just my physical appearance. I think he probably just spill it out right then and there. <laughs> What's the? Is it? Do you watch? You watch like uh, you know, like mob movies and stuff, like organized crime type stuff. No, stuff I try to stay away from it because that's what uh, that's what they tell us in in the justice field that none of that stuff is true and stay away from it. Don't watch it, CSI, any of that. And they tell us to stay away from it. I mean, are you? And you also, I guess, are hoping for a pro football career too. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, that's 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 my dream. That's what I want to do. Hopefully, it works out. Thanks, sir. Good luck, man. Thanks a lot. All right, no problem.